colleagues. Um, I rise as co-chair of our 19-member Legislative Jewish Caucus. Um, to be honest with you, I wish I did not have to make these remarks today, uh, but I do. Because about three weeks after we were all together for the last time before today on this floor, three weeks later, uh, the world changed for Jews here and around the planet. On October 7th, the terrorist organization Hamas, which runs Gaza, infiltrated southern Israel uh, and engaged in what can only be called a massive pogrom. A pogrom, for those who don't know, is when a country or a community uh, or other population violently targets Jews with the aim of exterminating or expelling those Jews. Mass organized violence against Jews has been happening forever. My great grandparents left Eastern Europe and Russia to come to the US because of those pogroms, because of that violence. And my, I have we have colleagues whose ancestors came here for the same reason. Violence against Jews in Iraq and other Middle Eastern and North African countries helped drive nearly a million Jews out of those countries to Israel in the 1940s and 1950s. The most well-known pogrom in history, of course, is Kristallnacht, a prelude of what happened during the Holocaust when six million Jews, half of all Jews on the planet, were industrially exterminated in factories in the 1940s. Hamas terrorists entered various Israeli communities and a music festival and began to butcher as many people as they could. When all was said and done that day, Hamas had massacred 1,200 people, mostly Israelis and mostly Jews, but also people of other nationalities, including Americans, people from Thailand, from Nepal, France, Britain, and other countries. But Hamas did not just kill. Hamas killed parents, massacred parents, in front of their children. Hamas massacred children in front of their parents. Hamas killed elderly people. And Hamas engaged in a mass campaign of sexual violence, brutally raping Israeli women, using forms of violence during those rapes that I do not feel comfortable describing on the floor of the Senate. This sexual violence can really only be des described as extreme sexual torture, and that's what it was. Hamas kidnapped several hundred Israelis and others, taking them into Gaza as hostages. More than 100 of them remain in Gaza today. These hostages range in age from 10 months old to 86 years old. Yes, they kidnapped babies. October 7th was the largest massacre of Jews in a single day since the Holocaust. It's hard to overstate the trauma that this massacre inflicted on Jews worldwide. Overnight, Jews felt deeply at risk. Hate crimes against Jews were already on the rise, with a majority of all religious-based hate crimes in the US directed at Jews, who constitute approximately 2% of the US population. Immediately after October 7th, we saw a spike in violence against Jews around the world, including attacks on synagogues in the US, Europe, and North Africa, a wave of vandalism and bomb threats against synagogues and other Jewish institutions in California and elsewhere, Jewish-owned businesses being vandalized. But these violent attacks were just the start. Equally disturbing was the reaction by many, including some so-called progressives, uh, who many in the Jewish community have always considered allies, a reaction to the Hamas attack that was horrifying. Immediately, immediately, within hours after the Hamas massacre, within hours and before Israel set foot in Gaza, we saw rallies in our cities, on our UC and CSU campuses, and elsewhere, not condemning the Hamas attack, 
but glorifying it. Not condemning Hamas, but rather condemning Israel even before it set foot in Gaza and calling for Israel's annihilation. We heard in California, leaders and organizers celebrate the Hamas murder, rape, and kidnapping of Jews as legitimate, quote-unquote, resistance, as a, quote-unquote, historic win, as a, quote-unquote, extraordinary day. We heard lots of references to from the river to the sea, which whatever some say they mean by it, is absolutely being used to mean the elimination of the state of Israel. At UC Berkeley, protesters made that crystal clear when they chanted, in addition to from the river to the sea, they chanted, quote, we don't want no two states, we want all of 48. And we also saw certain organizations, including some who regularly advocate in this building, remain silent when Jews were being slaughtered and raped on October 7th, and then quickly pivot to being quite vocal in condemning Israel and even calling uh, for the destruction of Israel's economy and for Israel and the destruction of Israel itself. We've seen some of these organizations pass resolutions condemning Israel while either ignoring or giving the most minimal lip service to what happened on October 7th or the fact that there continued to be hostages in Gaza. We saw the UC Ethnic Studies Faculty Council issuing a statement referring to October 7th as, quote, part of the Palestinian freedom struggle and criticizing UC for calling the attack terrorism. CSU Ethnic Studies faculty issued a statement stating their agreement with their UC colleagues. We saw a teach-in in Oakland Unified School District, which was endorsed by the Oakland Educational Association, uh, that taught straight-up hatred of Israel and Jews by teaching just flat-out falsehood about Jews in Israel, saying that Jews were not in Israel before 1948, they've been there for thousands of years, that Israel was only for white Jews, when most Jews in Israel are not of European descent, and glorifying the word intifada, which whatever the dictionary definition of intifada is, in the context of Israel, means killing Jews. We're aware of teachers in other school districts who were similarly teaching this non-factual history of Jews and Israel. All of this has created a poisonous and hostile environment for Jewish students in some of our K through 12 schools and on UC and CSU campuses. Members of our Jewish caucus over the recess have been meeting with students on these campuses and it is horrifying to hear what they are dealing with on school, the absolute hatred and harassment. We've also seen in public comment at various city councils, including in Oakland and in Long Beach, public comment just asserting anti-Semitic tropes. Sadly, none of this is new. Anti-Semitism has long been described as, quote, the oldest hatred. Jews have been subjected to violence, expulsion, and attempted extermination for millennia. And anti-Semitism spans the political spectrum. We've seen it on the left. We also see it on the right, whether it's the chant of Jews will not replace us at the Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville, the massacres by right-wing extremists at synagogues in Pittsburgh or Poe, um, or nationalist anti-Semitism by people like Viktor Orban Vladimir Putin, or Elon Musk promoting the great replacement theory. We have a responsibility to call this out wherever it happens. Um, finally, colleagues, I want to express uh, our caucus's horror at the absolute devastation that we are seeing in Gaza. Hamas must be removed from power in Gaza, and its ability to massacre Israelis must be degraded. But we know that the vast majority of Gaza residents did not commit violence on October 7th. A huge number of Gazans, including so many children, have died and are dying. Gaza is suffering, and Israel must take steps to avoid civilian death. 
Members of our caucus have been intensely critical of the Netanyahu government, which in our view, in my view, is not committed to a viable independent Palestine. We need Israel to be committed to full peace and to a two-state solution, just as we need the West Bank and Gaza and the governments there to be committed to not destroying Israel and killing Israelis. Colleagues, I want to just thank so many of you on behalf of our Jewish caucus. So many of you uh, in the Senate and also in the Assembly reached out to members of our caucus immediately after October 7th, and we are so deeply grateful. You have spoken out, you have met uh, with Jewish community in your districts, and we want to thank you. We look forward to working with you over the course of this year, and I thank you again.